Good morning. We're getting Thanks. ready to start our alpha time together and people are just gathering here and having a little food before we get down to the teaching. I am totally blessed and just, just humbled and grateful to be here. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm looking at all yeah, of this and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Nobody else is going to yeah. choose. I can back up. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and where Ow. are we? Oh, oh, oh. Oh, my God. Look at your outfit. What is that? Yeah, oh, this. boy. Oh, boy. <laughs> oh. This is one of the local tribes here. Mm. <laughs> Steve, where, where are we? Well, uh, we're in the beautiful house of Will and Sandy Redberg in Santa Monica with fellow friends from the Alpha Course. Hey, how are you? Right, right, right. Beautiful day we're going to have here. Yes, yes, yes. Wow, isn't it gorgeous? Of course, our whole table rocks, right? Hi, Stephen, how are you? We're doing a little documentary. You want to say anything uh, for the record? Yes, we have the table that rocks. We do. The rock of Gibraltar. Wow. <laughs> Thank you. I said to Will, uh, my goodness, I have to videotape. We have a chef in the house. It's seconds away from being done, so. This is a giant... Uh, scramble eggs. Scramble eggs. British style, European style. No, no, I want to yeah. know what you yeah. think. Uh, Athena is here. She's going to say something <laughs> smart, I'm sure. She knows a lot of good stuff. Say something. I, I think that this is a great place to come together, and I'm actually learning a lot today. <laughs> wow, you right. That's all I had to say. <laughs> I'm sure you have more to say. But Why don't you secretly you're being videotape shy. me? Of course I'm being shy. I know, but you're so pretty then you're on the camera. Okay. Well, thank, thank you, thank you. Thank you. Perfect. And, and this, this represents me, who's not so clear, not so fresh, not so perfect. And it's, and it's all the, the behavior, all of the sin, all of the stuff that I bring to the table to God. Um, be it today, be it, you know, 20 years ago. And, and so what happens is, you know, I read this passage in, in Ephesians. And first it says, be filled with the Spirit. Okay. Well, and so I'm wondering, okay, how do I be filled with the Spirit? What's happening? How do I, how do I bring that about? My, my premise is, is that, first of all, we are all, we're all filled with something. Okay? Think about that for a minute. Okay. We're all full of it. Okay? Um, really, what we're mostly filled up with is ourselves. It's just kind of the way we're made. That, you know, maybe it's the sin nature, maybe whatever. It's, it's mostly about me. That's why... Rick Warren writes the book on the Purpose Driven Church. The first line in the book is, it's not about you. And that, I mean, that could be the whole book. You know, I mean, it's great. Because because don't we all, I mean, it's just natural. I, I, I want to survive. I want to eat tonight. I want to be happy during the day. I want to, you know, come out of this. I, I, I want to do what I want to do, mostly. That's just natural. But if I want to begin this process of being filled up with the Spirit, what I need to do is start taking off some layers. So I say, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to make some room for God to come in here and, and do some work. So I, I take a little bit of those, those old deceitful behaviors out and make some room for God. And God comes in here and kind of fills things back up. And I take a look the next morning in my life and it doesn't look that much different. I mean, I made all this room for God and he comes in and supposedly fills me back up again. But it, it just, I don't know. What do I get out? What did I get out of that? Did I really change? Did anything happen? Well, you know, a little time goes by and I Lent comes and I say, okay, I'm going to get close to God during Lent. So I'm going to change some of these. I'm going to get some of I know what God's looking for. He wants me to give up that behavior. I'll, I'll give it up extra. Okay. <laughs> um, talking to Enoch the other day and he said he gave up humility for Lent. <laughs> That's evil. Okay, so I get rid of those things for Lent, leave some room for God to come in. And, and, and fill things back up again. And it, damn, come on, it just, you know, it just never looks like things are happening that fast. So I keep, keep going with the process, maybe I make some big changes, throw some stuff out, 
keep adding a little more of God, making room for God, and it just seems like an endless process. And sometimes I think, what's the use? You know, I keep taking off layers. I keep asking for God to fill things up, hoping He's changing my mind, and it just it just goes and goes and goes, and nothing seems to change. Now the reality is that what I see in this glass now is even a lot different than what I see in this glass. Even though to me it still looks pretty crummy, you know, as, as I look at myself and evaluate myself, it doesn't look like that much is going on. But if I keep the process going, and keep taking off layers, layer upon layer upon layer, and making room for God to fill that space back up again, there will come a time when I can actually look and see, and maybe other people will look and see, wow, you know, there's really been some changes that are noteworthy. I mean, I can tell that something has gone on there. And particularly if I just, you know, I go on a pilgrimage. <laughs> we, watched, we watched The Way last night. I think that was, was great. Have you seen that movie, The Way? Anyway, go on a pilgrimage, just get rid of a lot of that stuff, and really make room for God. And even though it's not this, it's starting to look good. And this may be a 10-year process, and it may be a 40-year process.